What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Yeah, I just washed my hair, and it's it's crazy. I know. I, I need to be like Michael Anthony, fitness reaction, gig economy, electrician, and engaged to Gina extraordinaire and get my hair cut. Well, he's letting you know. I'm but, but you know, I think it's so... I like running my I like my hair. Look, yeah, look at this. This is just straight <laughs> washed. But look at that. It's soft. It's curved. Look at that. Look at that. Ladies, look. Yeah, it looks kind of wild, but it just feels so nice. Anyway, I'm down the country doing some work and stuff. I had, had a few problems getting some things done that I wanted to get done. Um, but found some things that we could do and still were very, very productive. You know, anything that you can get done today is something you ain't got to worry about tomorrow. You know, you got that, power outside. That's right. Now, I got and electricity. On, that, on that side of the house. On the, on the side of the house. And we got a security light outside, too. So somebody tries to break in, boom, the light comes on and stuff. And I got walls taken down upstairs and things. So we, we got some work done. And now I'm, I'm, I'm relaxing. I'm at the hotel, motel, Holiday Inn. And I'm uh, trying not to go get any candy or sweets down at the uh, vending machine that is literally calling me. There's, there's, a tw there's, there's a Twizzler that's right there. And it's saying, Mark, Mark. And I'm like, no, no, it's, it's, it's too easy. It's too, it's too close. So I'm catching up on the news for the day. And Ed Warder said this about the Dallas Cowboys situation at wide receiver. It was tweeted it. And it, it made me have a deja vu moment. They didn't have to trade Amari Cooper for nothing. They erred in projecting what Michael Gallup would do coming off ACL injury. They never imagined that third round pick Jalen Turk, Turbot, uh, Tolbert couldn't even earn a game day spot. They chased Odell Beckham Jr. and Brandon Cooks and signed T.Y. Hilton, but too late. And I can add to that, uh, James Washington, they didn't think when they signed James Washington that his whole Dallas Cowboys resume would be one drop. Everything possible went wrong with the wide receivers. And I think what he's basically kind of saying is they were incompetent. But... I'm actually going to go ahead and take a different approach. I started thinking about that. It was like all these things that they did, all of these moves they did were scratch and dent moves. These were, I don't care, moves. And so I was trying to find a clip because Stephen Jones had said, you know, if you remember years ago when, when, when they first started trying to negotiate with Dak, Stephen Jones said, you know, Dak's got to understand he's got to take take less money so there's money for other people. You know, I don't see players right now taking less money as far as quarterbacks go. You know, Daniel Jones, I don't think he's going to take a team-friendly deal. Geno Smith is in a position where he, his value is like $40 million. They're talking about Lamar Jackson at like 52 and you think um, – uh, uh, Cincinnati's quarterback, he, you think he's going to take, you know, a, a team-friendly deal? Probably by this time next year, we'll be looking at $60 million for quarterbacks. And so I've been putting these things together because I was trying to find the clip of Stephen Jones saying that Dak Prescott needs to take less money so that way we can have a team around him. And I couldn't find the clip right there, but I did find a video that I did five months ago, 24 days before the beginning of the season. And I started listening to this and it was like, wow. You know, people say, you don't know what you're talking about. You know, you don't work for ESPN. You're not a Dallas Cowboys insider and stuff. <clears throat> but this, <laughs> let, let me just, let me play you the audio to it. Because if, if I go ahead and do it in my software, it'll take hours to upload here at the at the Fleabag Motel. But listen to this. This was, and because I, I know what's going to happen is, you know, uh, Stan's going to be out there saying, 
oh, he just recorded that and played it there. He didn't really do that. Okay. The name of the video is Stephen Jones making a point to Dak Prescott by not signing players five months ago. Okay, so I'll put the link in the description so that way you guys can go back and, and, and listen to this. But let's listen. But actually, I've been sitting here thinking and putting things together. And, and in my mind, um, I try and look outside the box sometimes and give you something different than what other people think. There was an article, and I didn't finish reading all of it, from uh, Blogging the Boys. Um, the title of it was, A New Study Shows the Cowboys Are Hanging Their Quarterbacks Out to Dry. And I, like I said, I haven't read it or anything like that. But then I started thinking about this, putting pieces together, and thinking about Stephen Jones. You remember that Stephen Jones, when it came to Dak Prescott, and the many years it took before they finally ended up getting a deal, um, you looked at it from Dak Prescott being an un, you know, a fourth-round draft pick, getting $680,000 for the first three years of his contract, and then getting $2 million the next. And the Cowboys, of course, then franchise tagging him. And trying to, you'll remember Stephen Jones saying that Dak Prescott needs to understand he needs to take a team-friendly deal to leave money on the table for others. So here's the thing. I think it was then wrestling coach of mine. He became principal. In high school, Charles Oslin. And I believe he became the principal of the high school that I went to. I think it was him that I'm going to quote this from. I remember being in his class and him telling the story about this young guy who was trying to get a parking space, right? And there was one parking space and there was an old lady in a real nice car that was trying to get in there and he zipped into the space and he said that's what you get when you're young and quick and she took her Mercedes and she rammed it in the back of his car and smashed it and she said yeah that's what you get when you're old and rich she didn't care about wrecking a car she didn't care a rat's ass about how much money it was going to cost her. She wanted to prove her point that she was right. Now, I don't know if that was a real story or not, but I remember that story, and I think it was Charles Oslin. And let's put that in with Stephen Jones and the Cowboys. The Cowboys had a vendetta against the Mark Cooper. Let's, let's be clear here. That was not, let's make a business decision and do the best we can for the team by getting as much compensation. That was, I am sending a message to you that I don't give a crap what? about what Point it on. costs me, but I'm going to send you yep. to Cleveland, the worst place to go, a place that doesn't have a quarterback. And I'm going to do it right now. I don't care about the ramifications. I'm rich. It's not going to affect me. I'm still going to have my 7-Eleven wine. In my, my, my perfect steak, but it's me causing you and proving a point. Pain. Pain. So let's go back to that. Dak Prescott ended up getting that $40 million contract. Mm hmm. Stephen Jones, Jerry Jones. They held it against his ass. You out the name, man. getting. Forced their hand. They, they, they literally were playing poker and they lost. They went all in that, yeah, we're going to make Dak Prescott take a, a team friendly deal. Now, I'm not saying that this is the case, but you kind of start looking at this because we've heard all off season that, you know, we, we you, you can't afford. We can't afford. We can't afford to spend money. It's not the way you can do business. You know, the things that the Rams are doing, we don't feel like that's the way you win in football. And you look at what they've done with the defense, right? You know, they brought in at least Anthony Barr, they put the draft picks and stuff, and the defense. And you almost feel like when you look at the offense and you look at right now what we have on the offensive line, okay? And, and people have come at me and told me, oh, you, you're making too much out of it. 
I told you guys Wait, last the, the, week oh, in the practice oh, oh. against. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> this shit right here. This shit right here. If I can know that, uh, the, the, the next part is coming up. If I can see this, how come they can't see it? Now listen. It's Denver. Tyron Smith was limping. People came back at me and said, oh, he went back into practice. He's fine. You're making shit up about it. Well, Mike McCarthy on Saturday said, Tyron Smith, we're taking it slow. He aggravated the ankle. We're taking our time. I'm not saying that it's going to be a long-term issue, but if you are saying we're going to take our time, there is a problem with the ankle, and we haven't gotten to week one. If you saw Josh Ball as the swing tackle, as the swing tackle. So Josh Ball does not look like he's anywhere close to ready for prime time. And Tyron Smith, you know, we know six years running, every year that Dak Prescott has been the quarterback for the Cowboys, Tyron Smith has missed time. We know it's not about if, but more like when. If we get lucky and Tyron Smith does hold up for the whole season, hey, I'm I'm ecstatic. I'm praying that that happens. But see, you have to prepare and plan for time without him. And here's the thing. The more you listen to it, I mean, the more you look at the situation and you see that Cedric Wilson, although, you know, it's revisionist history with Cedric Wilson. Cedric Wilson, you know, before last year, nobody cared about Cedric Wilson. But now he's the greatest wide receiver since Tariq Hill. Um, but letting go of Mari Cooper, um, the offensive line and looking and not getting actually a veteran presence and understanding that we've got so many young guys, you start thinking about this article and saying that, yeah, the Cowboys really haven't done much to help Dak Prescott. And in fact, you almost feel like we're trying to prove a point. If we signed Dak Prescott. Hey, you know, we said yeah, if, if he got to leave money on the table for others. He didn't leave money on the table for others, and this is what you get to prove his point, even though we do have $19 million in cap space. But as you look around the NFL, this is the only team that does that. The Rams were in far worse shape than we were going into uh, the season, yet that hasn't precluded them from making them their way to bring in more talent. And see, the problem for the Cowboys is everybody looks and says, well, Dak can't get it done in the playoffs. Here's the thing. The Cowboys always have a great front line of guys. If our team stayed healthy, the team that played those first eight games throughout the year, they could have won the Super Bowl. But the problem was is once Tyron Smith got hurt and you had to reshuffle the line and it was every week just about a new formation, once Zeke Elliott tore his PCL and once Tony Pollard got injured and once Amari Cooper was out with COVID, our secondary guys, the guys that had to play valuable minutes, aren't the same. The Rams said, well, we lost Jefferson. Let's go get Odell. Hey, we need extra pass for Let's go get Von Miller. We know it's going to cost us a third-round draft pick, and we're only going to keep him for one season. But, hey, this is what it's going to take for us to win it this year. We end up having those problems, and we just do without. And so by the time we get to the playoffs, our team is worn down without having the reinforcements. And this goes back to Stephen Jones saying, you know, well, Dak's got to leave money on the table for others. And I almost feel like this is Stephen Jones trying to make that point to get back at Dak Prescott. Now, maybe I'm crazy, but there's $19.8 million of cap space. Are you honestly telling me that you can't go out and say, we're going to get an insurance policy to protect Dak Prescott and make sure we have a veteran that can come in here and play if Tyron Smith goes down so we can focus in on Tyler Smith being a great guard? You're going to tell me that Matt Lewinsko, who may end up having surgery and may not be able to play this year? Is the backup swing tackle along with Josh Ball, who's never started an NFL game, and you got $19.8 million? Sorry. This really feels like this is what you get when you're old and rich. So, 
I don't know shit. I just don't. But everything we said right there came to fruition. This was, I, listen, this was 24 days, 9 hours, and 44 minutes before the season started. Tyron Smith was hurting. I didn't even realize, you know, I, I, I do so many videos, I don't know what, it, and I'll be honest with you. When I do a video, I go into like a trance. I don't know what I said when I'm done with it. I don't watch myself afterwards. So listening to this, I said, you need an insurance policy for Tyron Smith. You know, it'd be great if he gets through the season, but I don't expect it. I said, you need to go out and get some more people for your quarterback. You know, and looking and letting Amari Cooper go and Cedric Wilson, and we didn't replace him. When you looked at where we were last year, with all of the negativity, it's amazing that we made the playoffs. And somehow, some way, the only person that gets blamed in this is Dak Prescott. And so, I'm sorry. I didn't, you know what? He didn't play perfect. I got you. But when you went into the season and me, Joe the fan, Joe the fan knows that you don't have enough weapons on there to compete. Joe the fan here knows that when you don't have Amari Cooper and that Zeke Elliott is injured going into playoffs, you don't win. We didn't have Amari Cooper. We only had one weapon in CeeDee Lamb. We lost Tony Pollard. And, and you go to the backups, they're not good. The Joneses set Dak up for failure because they're pissed that he didn't take the deal that they wanted to take the year before, that he literally had him over a barrel. And here's where it's interesting because you see the subtle language that Jerry Jones is putting out there. Jerry Jones don't want to sign him to another four-year deal. We want Dak for 10 years. He wants to go ahead and spread this shit out. They are sending a message to Dak Prescott we're not doing it that way again. And they didn't give a rat's ass about what it was doing to the team other than getting their way. Now, you can call me crazy. You can call me crazy. But I can tell you, everything I said on that video right then and there five months ago was exactly as what had happened this season. And let me get up, get finished with this thing because Mike's trying to, he's trying to find out on this gig thing. Dude making five $500 a day. And so I don't want to be in the way of him making 500 Damn. Can, can, can a brother, can, can I get it on that? 500 a day. Damn. That's like five days. If you work five days a week, that's like three grand a week. That's like 12000 a month. That's like 144000 a year. Damn. All right. Damn, Gina. All right, good people. I hope you're having a great evening. Uh, tomorrow morning, I'm going to be happy because I can get up. I can go to the dump because i got a truck full of debris to get rid of. I'm going to see my buddy Jet over at the Red Brick House. I'm going to do some stuff over there. And then we're going to jet on back home to the man cave. And I appreciate each and every one of you guys, as well as you ladies. And God bless you. I'll see you soon.